नमस्कार दर्शकों फाउंडेशन ऑफ आर्ट एंड कल्चर आप सभी का आज के लाइव सेशन में बहुत बहुत स्वागत करता है आज के लाइव सेशन में हम बात करने जा रहे हैं देश के वरिष्ठ कलाकार रियाज कोमू सर से आ, सर का जन्म 1971 में केरला में हुआ सर ने अपनी कला शिक्षा सर जे जे स्कूल ऑफ आर्ट से कंप्लीट की सर ने देश विदेश में कई प्रदर्शनियों में हिस्सा ले चुके हैं तथा सर अनेक सम्मानों से सम्मानित हैं तो चलिए हम सीधे बात करते हैं सर से नमस्कार सर आज के सेशन की हमारे पहले क्वेश्चन से आपने अलग अलग मीडियम में काम किया उसके बारे में आपके अनुभव हमें बताए Yeah, I think uh, uh, as an artist, uh, uh, working in different materials, uh, being a kind of a privilege. I mean, I always felt that uh, uh, maybe it is because of uh, my different kind of experiences uh, growing up in Kerala, in a completely uh, a different kind of a social or political premise. Uh, you know, growing up with uh, a lot of tendencies into you know going into public sphere to do a certain kind of an activism in fact i started my early drawings on the street walls to do you know political uh, campaigns uh, but uh, you know towards uh, you know when i became i mean at the age of 21 uh, my brother you know insisted me to uh, to look into textile design as uh, uh, one of the career to kind of pursue so that's how i really reached bombay uh, to study textile design and uh, i joined jj school of art uh, but uh, as i said i mean you know the the circumstances which you go through keep changing your plans i mean so 92 was the year i joined jj school of art and we all know that i mean 92 was a very crucial year in the history of uh, india's uh, political sphere and it changed the way we looked at uh, many of our ideals and you know, the spirit of diversity uh, so i think uh, the crisis which uh, uh, i also went through at the time of uh, 92 where india was also like i mean liberalizing a lot of uh, migration was happening to you know the cities uh, i in fact lost my interest in textile design and i pursued painting so you see that i mean you know there is multiple levels of decision making coming into uh, one towards one's own practice to you know to, to get into the different possibilities of uh, uh, communication so then i kind of uh, pursued uh, uh, painting but uh, this was the same time like i mean i was getting exposed to many different kinds of art forms sculpting you know like also working with photography because i used to my earlier sketchbook was you know almost, almost like i'm mean, having a camera always along so then installation art i mean that was something which uh, i was very much you know attracted to so my academic uh, premise was uh, very much a site of experiment so that's one reason like i mean i think i've been so far able to kind of indulge uh, with uh, 
different kind of materials because i always feel that uh, the materials you know has its own strength in its in its history but at the same time the new materials which comes in whether in the form of technology or you know any other things it allows us to kind of communicate better so so i think uh, i've been very flexible towards uh, uh, the way of uh, using uh, materials in fact i mean in the later period i also went back to my love towards textile i did you know many projects with uh, you know using textile uh, yeah i think uh, it's all because of the the circumstances like i mean which you have brought up it yeah okay um आपने अलग भाषा का चुनाव किया और शुरुआत में आपको उस पर कैसा एहसास हुआ या व्हेन एज आई सेड अर्लियर आई थिंक माय अराइवल इन बॉम्बे वाज इट अ क्रूशियल पीरियड सो आई हैड टू रियली यू नो स्टार्ट इन्वॉल्विंग इन अ सर्टेन काइंड ऑफ अ पॉलिटिकल डिस्कोर्स बिकॉज़ maybe because of you know uh, uh my early learnings about like human I mean, understanding socio uh political premise and also my family background i mean my father was uh, uh, you know a social activist and he was also somebody who ran a you know a matchbox factory with hundreds of employees and you know like there was a completely different kind of a social commitment I mean, which i learned also you know from him but uh, i think uh, uh the way uh, i was like i mean you know trying to understand uh, uh the people's crisis around me it was uh, something which always attracted me to kind of completely different kind of a language and the continued experiences which i got in for example uh immediately after i came out of the college i mean i did an exhibition titled uh, unconditional <clears throat> which was in fact the exhibition which dealt with uh the way the migrants tries to survive in a city like uh, bombay because i have seen that the migrants have been kind of coming to you know indian urban premises escaping from you know a certain kind of discrimination which is economical at the same time which is also like i mean caste driven so I've been kind of following you know that particular you know very resilient you know uh, community and i started uh, you know working with them that in fact i mean i could say that i mean that was my foundation for engaging you know towards uh, you know my art expressions and uh, there are many many other instances that i mean which kept uh, giving me you know very interesting kind of experiences to kind of understand uh, you know civilizations in a very different level i mean one of my interesting experience was that I mean I got an opportunity to to coordinate the coach workshop in Bombay uh, which happened in the Wasim uh, place and I was one of the you know major coordinators and uh, after that I was invited for a residency in Pakistan in that was the Wasim residency which was also associated with the you know the triangle residency program of that time and my one month which i spent uh, in pakistan was very you know hugely transformative because that's the time that i started realizing or indulging in a completely different kind of a you know a cultural premise where <clears throat> we have learned always to kind of look at you know completely in an opposing spirit but the communications uh, you know the meetings i had the places which i visited and one place uh, had a huge impact on me it is a place called tatta a makli you know it is an industry region where you know i got to see one of the biggest uh, you know uh, cemeteries like i mean which is also considered as one of the unesco sites uh, in the world so i started you know you know i started documenting that and but the way i started like i mean trying to kind of understand you know that particular cultural site which gave me a completely different insight about indian civilization you know so the way it has grown through different engagements you know different kind of diverse uh, uh, you know arguments which 
helped me to kind of set up an exhibition called Faith Accompli. The way I, the, the moment I came back to uh, uh, to to India, and I started working on a particular show, and I showed it in Delhi Lalitkala Academy, and uh, it continued with the Bombay Sakshi Gallery. There, I very you know very argumentatively, I just uh, put forward another work uh, called Father's Balcony. So, so this kind of uh, you know. Uh, approach to kind of, you know, introspect one's own social histories has helped me to kind of, you know, to continue. And the same <clears throat> experience, I would say, uh, I got when and an opportunity to show my works uh, in Venice Biennale, and <clears throat> kind of an international exposure to kind of look at and understand how certain kind of curations uh, by bringing together global art practices into one particular. <clears throat> You know, a site, and uh, allowing artists to kind of reimagine possibilities. So I think there were many different levels of uh, you know, uh, you know, encountering artistic practices uh, has allowed me to kind of continue what I am doing. And uh, yeah, I think uh, the subject which I am trying to deal with, because I always think that as an artist, I am trying to archive the time. Uh, which I'm living in, you know, that's for me. I mean, it's an important exercise. So it keeps, you know, me hugely involved with what is going on around me, what has happened in history, you know, what is important for an artist to kind of, you know, to to look at. So I think the process is on. I mean, I can't just say that. I mean, you know, that uh, I became an artist who looks at, <clears throat> you know, social political issues as my main area but i think i have always realized one has no escape from it i mean i have to be there and you know like come and keep practicing such kind of exercises yeah okay um yeah i think uh, research is very important like i said uh, if you're taking a particular subject to kind of conceptualize an exhibition around that you know what an artist is also always trying to do is that you know he's putting a certain kind of uh, thinking uh, into his image making so it's very important that i mean you know your articulation is correct and you go around or take inspiration from factual uh, you know possibilities and uh, i think history is a very inspiring site uh, to look at so I have seen, like, I mean, you know, some of the major abstract artists. The amount of uh, the research they indulge into, and also the spiritual learnings which they go through. Like, I mean, it's it's amazing that I mean, because I think knowledge. I mean, research is not a term one should consider in in the way it is understood. I mean, you know, research is also like I mean, your continuous reading. Research is also like I mean, your continuous watching. You know, research is also your alertness. I mean, you know, in today. You know the amount of like I mean information which is pouring into your palm. I mean it is like I mean you know, you know huge. I mean if you start even indulge with that, that becomes a research material for you know all of us to kind of you know, to move on. So I think in today's age, I mean you know your alertness itself becomes like I mean a, a best way to become you know a researcher. Yeah. Okay. Um. आपके कामों में मुंबई बहुत महत्वपूर्ण विषय है. तो आप इस विषय में क्या कहना चाहते हैं इसके पीछे का कारण क्या है या द सी द रीजन फॉर मी टू कम टू बॉम्बे वाज बिकॉज़ इट इज अ सिटी ऑफ पॉसिबिलिटीज आई मीन इन द सिटी वेयर यू नो पीपल कम टू काइंड ऑफ यू नो ड्रीम यू नो दिस इज अ सिटी लाइक आई मीन वेयर इट एंटरटेन्स यू नो यू नो मोस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सो बट द वे I mean, I mean, as I said earlier, that I mean, you know, I reached Bombay at a crucial junction of its history, so and it taught me uh, many levels of, uh, you know, uh, understanding from the human sufferings uh, which I saw around, and at the same time, you know, Mumbai is like one of the most important, you know, cosmopolis, uh, you know, a, a cosmopolitan city we have. and it has got people from all across the you know india living together and also many people from different parts of the live, uh, world living here 
and it's been one of the most important port cities. And eventually, in a modern era, we have seen that uh, Bombay has become the spine of the nation because it is one of the strongest, uh, uh, you know, economic uh, capital uh, of our nation. So there are many things which the city gets attracted to. But uh, for me, you know, uh, coming to JJ was that because it had a textile design, but eventually I turn into, you know, art practice. And I think Bombay has allowed me to kind of expose myself into kind of different realities and also see the contemporary art practices which was happening around. There were many young artists like coming over practicing at, uh, uh, you know, the same time as I was in. Uh, and Bombay has a very strong, you know, art history that where it has become a transformative agent in, you know, building, you know, very interesting projects. So I think uh, the city is always, I mean, as a university, it's always helped me uh, to, to, to formulate a completely different language. And as, as this, I think this is a city that, I mean, which shows a very strong resilient spirit of uh, human and uh, which is very inspiring. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I think uh, if one starts talking about, I mean, you know, the positive spirits of the city, I mean, it is enormous. But, you know, since last two, three months, I mean, especially in the last two months, like what we saw, it's very painful because the people who left, you know, their villages to kind of come and settle in an urban premise that which accepts everyone is, you know, we started seeing a painful sight where they started walking back, you know, miles and miles to reach their home. So I think, uh, you know, I think Bombay is going through a kind of a period of lament and it couldn't own its own people. I think, you know, it's very sad to see that city disowned, uh, you know, many of their migrants. So I'm also somebody like, I mean, who's lamenting that, you know, so I'm sure that, you know, uh, in, in, in the coming future, I mean, you know, they all return and, you know, like, I mean, you know, things start functioning, you know, beautifully. I think Bombay, I think in that sense, I think, you know, Bombay has uh, a lot to offer. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think we covered uh, quite a bit. I mean, because uh, whenever I did an exhibition, that I mean, you know, I was trying to kind of conceptualize it uh, around whether it is the recent show which I did in Wadera Art Gallery in in Delhi in early 2018 uh, in February, an exhibition titled Holy Shiver. Uh, some of my main concerns there was, uh, you know, addressed uh, very upfront. It was also a project which celebrated the art in the Indian constitution, which most of the people didn't know. Like, I mean, you know, Nehruan invited uh, Nandalal Bose and uh, Prem Bihari Nara and Raizada to, you know, to, to, to design the Indian constitution to celebrate uh, the diverse spirit of the nation. So that's something which attracted me a lot. I wanted to tell a story of India's, uh, you know, multiculturalism through an exhibition where I also wanted to address, uh, you know, the sufferings of, uh, you know, the marginalized and also speak quite strongly about, you know, some of the atrocities which were done towards the minorities. So I think uh, in that project, there was another, uh, you know, work which I had put forward was a juxtaposition of Gandhi, or not a juxtaposition, I would say, uh, a conversation between Gandhi and Ambedkar, which I thought that, I mean, it is important uh, in today's uh, political premise because we always understood them in, you know, completely opposite uh, zones. So I was also like, I mean, trying to kind of, you know, propose a discourse around and also I had a, I had a, a sculptural uh, work called Fourth World, uh, where two Ambedkar statues in conversation, like which uh, at the latest stage that I mean, I exhibited that work in the cradle of humankind uh, in, in South Africa. So the, the engagement in that sense is on. And the last uh, exhibition which I did uh, in Bangalore in Sumuga Gallery called, you know, Out of Place was also something which looked at, uh, you know, the the horrible realities we are also going to enter because of 
you know, surveillance because of, you know, a certain kind of uh, suppressive politics. So there also I looked at, you know, some of the historic moments, uh, especially around the freedom struggle. And, you know, I think, I mean, you know, that's one area which I'm very much interested today to kind of relook at. So I think, yeah, I think the, you know, the socio uh, political issues is, you know, an ongoing interest. I think uh, I'm sure I mean, it will continue and it is not going to stop. Yeah. Uh, Bharat ke kala siksha par aapka bahut... बहुत सारी परियोजना आपने शुरुआत की थी इस बारे में कुछ बताइए क्या आई थिंक यू नो इट वाज इट्स एन ऑन गोइंग डिस्कोर्स यू नो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशंस वी शुड हैव व्हाट काइंड ऑफ म्यूजियम्स वी शुड फ्लोरिश व्हाट काइंड ऑफ एजुकेशन सिस्टम यू नो वन शुड हैव एंड व्हाई वी आर डूइंग आर्ट आई मीन व्हाट इज द रिलेशनशिप यू नो ऑफ आर्ट विद पीपल and how can art educate you know a, a society about uh, you know uh, the ongoing you know uh, arguments and what does you learn from art history i think it's an ongoing uh, concern uh, which i always uh, carried with me like many other uh, curators and artists uh, of our time but uh, i think my involvement became a little bit more uh, with those kind of questioning was uh, how do you you know come up with a project which eventually becomes uh, a catalyst in creating an ecosystem uh, you know for <clears throat> artists of different kind communities of different kind start to understand like what contemporary art practice is what art is so most of the people knew only about you know in kerala for example people knew about raja ravi varma in india like i mean you know anybody knew about you know who is uh, am a for saying you know in an international premise that everybody speaks about because but you know beyond that i mean there is a lot of art is being made the problem was that i mean it was not able to reach the people because uh, there are you know there are very immediate reasons because it never you know uh, you know we never had the infrastructure which could uh, bring people into those kind of premises i mean an artist never engaged artists always uh, you know worked in isolation the community understood artist as somebody who practices in isolation so i think uh, the turning point in my case to kind of involve a little bit more with people was like i mean kochi you know when i you know had the opportunity to kind of you know to start working on uh, the kochi mazdoor's biennial where we had to kind of uh, implant an idea uh, with you know lot of possibilities we had to kind of communicate with the people we decided to kind of celebrate the history of a particular location where 40 different communities are living together in a 3 or 4 km square and uh, a site which has been a port that which always been in the receiving end and kerala has that you know history of uh, public action and, and you know like showing lot of interest in you know cultural projects but we were very fortunate uh, to to deal with a certain kind of uh, you know uh, researches which was going on there i mean there was this patanam excavation project which was looking at kerala's uh, you know historical past and we could use those kind of symbolisms like excavation became a metaphor also for the biennial i still remember you know uh talking about the, the the religious conflicts which we are going through the pj cheriyan the head of uh, kerala council for you know historical research telling an interesting anecdote to explain that how important that particular excavation site is that if you dig 1 meter you go 1000 years if you dig another 1 meter you go 2000 years if you dig one more meter you know you go beyond all these today's conflicting religions so it became like a very interesting symbolism at the same time you know i mean kerala is also a site that where many you know new arrivals have happened whether it was religion whether it was different cultures whether it was knowledge even you know what we saw in recent times that which came from wuhan you know from the origin of the corona virus so, so like the advantage which even we see in kerala was that it could respond you know on time it could use its you know scientific methods to kind of resist 
community came together to resist. You know, you saw a very strong public action working. I think this is what we also, to some extent, used when we introduced the biennial in a, in, in, in a cultural uh, premise. So when people realized that this art project is celebrating one's own cultural legacy, you know, people understood what does it mean. So many works which was produced even by international artists, you know, it became, you know, uh, a promise for even, you know, Indian art world, you know, many, you know, international artists started coming to this new, new port, I mean, which was almost silent after the trade was sinking. So, you know, I mean, in fact, I mean, India got a new, you know, you know, art port, uh, you know, by, you know, introducing. So it's, uh, so what I mean to say is that, I mean, you know, to answer your question that, you know, uh, I was, you know, I, I could, you know, engage in a project there where it proved that if you start celebrating, you know, the legacy of the people, I think people stand by you. And through that, they understand different or complicated uh, languages of art making, whether it is an installation, whether it is a performance art, whether it is a painting. So, you know, we were, you know, cherishing the moments that were very complex artworks, you know, uh, which was celebrated. It became a kind of a conversation in, in any corners. So I have that strong belief that, I mean, you know, if you engage with that you know, sense of understanding about people's history, you know, you can actually, you know, introduce uh, complex narratives to them. It is the same thing uh, which we did with many other projects. And the Students Binale is one of the greatest example in that sense. I mean, you know, we were able to introduce a project that where we could bring students from all across the country. You know, later it became also a subcontinent project, but all across the country, students' work were brought in to Kochi and students were also like, I mean, you know, uh, funded to kind of travel in, to be together, to discuss their concerns. And, you know, it was almost like a kind of blueprint of what India's, you know, young art world is thinking. So, so there are many discourses emerges out of that. I mean, the curators who traveled across the country experienced a different reality in what kind of circumstances Indian art is uh, surviving. So... What eventually happens is that, I mean, you get many questions in the end. I mean, you know, how do we move towards? I mean, you know, how do you make it a habit of, you know, engaging with artists, engaging with, uh, you know, students, groups to, to, to get more possibilities? So I think I'm, I'm, I'm an optimist in that sense to, you know, to engage further with more, you know, important projects. Even in, even in, in the time of the corona crisis, you know, I was also thinking about, you know, many possibilities that, I mean, where, you know, crisis in history, the crisis has taught us, you know, many lessons to kind of, you know, to, 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 to go and think much more sharply and, you know, creatively to come up with solutions. So I think we need to be, you know, strongly optimistic to, to, to come up with new ideas and, you know, art making. ग्रू a huge crisis of you know the migrants walking you know miles and miles to reach uh, uh, you know their homes we saw them you know falling dead we saw them like i mean you know standing in queues to get you know uh, some amount of food and uh, and you know i mean uh, i think uh, this story this this particular archive uh, is going to be like, I mean, you know, uh, uh, become a new narrative in, in many of the art practicing, you know, uh, you know, many of the artists who are, you know, engaging with this kind of issues. I think 
that I mean we have seen in like I mean in the history of epidemics that I mean you know, the art which is made uh, by some of the major contemporaries were displayed in public spaces were displayed in I mean it has happened post plague in it the works were displayed in churches for people to kind of experience the kind of pain which the society has gone through and a similar you know I'm I'm very st I strongly feel that because this has become a major discourse in India. slowly it becoming a kind of a you know a huge uh, human rights uh, issue i feel that i mean this language is going to kind of you know to haunt us and uh, and i feel that i mean an a, a social transformation for a nation like that where it will demand you know our political system to kind of you know to, to protect uh, you know uh, the suff protect the people from the suffering i think that particular art which is going to kind of come out of this crisis will have a strong impact uh, that's you know i feel i'm i don't want to talk about i mean you know what has happened uh, you know in, in this indian history like the earlier periods that how the art has transformed i mean we have seen that i mean many different kinds of art streams transforms the social premise but i strongly feel that this particular crisis is going to you know create a lot of interesting you know important expressions from the art community and which will have a very transformative effect uh, 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 you know uh, in the coming days okay uh aapke prerna stroot kya kya rahe hain who inspires you and what inspires you see uh i think uh, to tell you frankly like i mean you know my huge inspiration has been my parents and my parents taught me to kind of you know to stand by truth you know like work for uh, you know uh the society like i'm an engage uh, uh, very strongly with uh, you know the issues which you think that i mean to be to be discussed i think uh, then as you progress that what they teaches you uh, to be in then you start encountering those kind kind of similarities like i mean those kind of learnings in history whether i have i encountered that with like i mean you know some of our you know histories of freedom movement you know whether in the life of ambedkar or you know whether in the life of like i mean you know many artists i mean you know van gogh was one of my biggest inspiration when i was uh studying in jj school of art and in fact my ma thesis was uh, on van gogh's works so you know so i think uh, uh, uh the inspirations is always like i mean come from you know different levels but you know for me i mean the foundation of that inspiration has come from my parents that where they always taught me to kind of you know to be or stand by the truth you know so that continue you know uh, it's, a, it's an ongoing process in my practice okay. uh kala aur chintan ka kya sambandh hai relationship between art and thinking i think uh, you know it's a very important question because you know people always uh, uh, you know even yesterday like when i saw the ram day before yesterday i think that ramesh sir was like trying to explain you know that how do you understand the art so for me i think uh, you know that question is uh, you know uh, is, is 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 always like i mean in the flux i mean so i mean everybody is like i mean curious about uh, but for me i mean you know my understanding is always like you know that, uh, art you know making is one of the most important process for an artist that where he engages in thinking you know that as as he makes art he is thinking and and uh, he is actually finding a shape finding a shape to his thought and it is an important thing like i mean and i don't know i mean you know how do you you know articulate you know uh, this particular uh, aspect beyond this and uh, i know that i mean there are many artists who have spoken about this particular aspect but this is a, this is also a very important uh, point how do you educate you know the youngsters so i remember you know in 2016 when we decided uh, to title the student biennial we called it making as thinking so we wanted to kind of instill a thought in the young minds who are learning art in completely different kind of academic structures and you know circumstances we thought it would be good to kind of 
you know give them a, 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 a kind of a, an interesting idea that i mean the making is thinking i mean you know the art while art making that you're coming up with your thought processes you're propagating like i mean a certain idea i think it worked uh, to some extent uh, you know from my communications with many curators of that uh, uh you know uh, they have come up with good feedbacks that i mean students understood i mean and why we are making art you know even yesterday like i mean i heard that indra pramit talking about i mean students going through uh, a campus for five years and they come out and they are perplexed that i mean you know that what to do and because they didn't utilize or they were not told or they were not learned whether whatever he is doing is part of his you know thinking process i mean many of the students understand art making as a craft you know so they learn a skill and get out so that's why you see like i mean only one percent of uh, art students survive in the mainstream art making the rest of them go into you know different kinds of easy you know job oriented uh, you know uh, premises so so in that sense like i mean it is it is a very important question that i mean we deal with it with you know better resources i think we have uh, you know many major artists you know who are uh, you know practicing i think they should start engaging with campuses and uh, teach this kind of a formulation so we will have you know better art also coming from institutions yeah yeah uh, sir corona kal ne aapko kis tarah prabhavit kiya uh yeah i think uh, it's been like uh many or uh, like many of you uh, i mean almost all across the world people are going through a you know completely different kind of a you know a process of uh, thinking and uh, for me you know sitting at home the amount of informations which are pouring in about you know the stories of our existence you know the, the scientific theories the new inventions the crisis in the you know the medicine industry you know the the problems which you see in uh, you know social distribution systems and uh, it exposed that i mean how weak uh, you know the human being is in front of this invisible virus and uh, you know it i know that i mean it is provoking many societies to kind of rethink about the social infrastructure they have people are rethinking about uh, you know the idea of globalization you know the people are thinking about you know capitalism people are rethinking about the better ways of like i mean implementing you know socialist ideologies and i to some extent i stand by those kind of socialist interventions which has happened in in in, in societies which has helped uh, to handle this corona crisis uh, much 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 better and i will i would like to kind of speak uh, you know you know the, the the famous you know the kerala model which is uh, in 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 discussion and uh, in fact i read i mean i've been kind of reading or you know listening to like many interviews that were people talking about this and you know, how kerala became so successful in containing you know this virus i mean there is a reason to that i mean there is a very strong you know past Uh, where it engaged in social distribution system and kerala has a strong you know uh, public action network you know people are like i mean you know learned educated i mean there is a you know strong nursing system you know there is a there is an understanding about like i mean health uh, which has to be a, a, you know a, a right like education health and other means should be like i mean part of you know the common you know people's you know basic rights so there are you know many things that i mean which has come in front of uh, our question about the failed social distribution systems i mean we believe that i mean you know some of the you know the major nations are the safest space space to live but we saw them collapsing in front of us i mean so because of the extreme privatization you know the business around insurance lobbies you know we saw you know completely a different kind of you know uh, collapse of you know many established notions about human settlements so i mean states like kerala or you know like i mean we saw that i mean goa containing it uh, you know you know with with a better policies some of the northeastern states like I mean, containing it with 
maybe it's also because of the you know the social distribution system the people's behavior pattern is completely different and uh, and uh, you know i think uh, my concern is also that i mean how do we as a bigger nation like i mean you know consolidate this learning and come up with uh, you know uh, better uh, uh, help uh, and uh, better uh, help infrastructure to 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 further our plans i mean you know, so i mean in the context of art making you know i have not you know i've been trying to kind of understand that what happened in history like i mean you know post epidemics i mean how people you know contained and how people articulated how people you know came up with like i mean interesting discourses to kind of have a better world you know but how you know i i mean so far i mean i've been reading a lot of poems you know because i think uh, i think that's one of the biggest uh, you know uh, art form which came out uh, at the time of uh, you know the corona crisis i think because people are in isolation they are in a better or a kind of a you know different frame of mind I mean, it is the art form which was very easy to kind of express and we are also seeing that um, there are a lot of trolls around there is a lot of interesting communication there is a lot of surveillance there is a lot of counter surveillance you know so i think uh, it's been a very interesting engaging you know uh, time for me i think uh, the main thing was that i mean that one focus you know that if the whole world is like I mean, focused on this invisible virus and uh, that particular invisible virus is teaching us many levels of you know uh, i mean about our you know human behavior system you know what has happened to our environment you know what kind of power lobbies we have what kind of infrastructure you know we are i mean what is lacking why people like like why people are ready to kind of walk thousands and thousands of kilometer because one one has to start imagining that distance and you know why they are doing it and some of the social theorists are saying that because you know that walking is not for them like i mean it is you know they have been suffering that kind of life they lead that kind of you know suffering life so it's very interesting to kind of understand that kind of a human condition and uh, in fact i think corona was a you know a, the big uh, learning process for me and like 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 most of the people i'm not just saying that you know many of my friends i mean who, who i am in conversation with many artist friends writers you know filmmakers they all saying that i mean it is changing the perception i mean where are we heading to so yeah कलाकृति का समाज से क्या संबंध होता है रिलेशनशिप ऑफ आर्ट एंड सोसाइटी आई थिंक वी आंसर दैट आई थिंक यू नो दैट या इन दैट वे बट बट आई वुड ट्राई टू काइंड ऑफ मेबी यू नो आर्टिकुलेट और आर्ग्यू इन अ वेरी डिफरेंट लेवल सी इंडिया इज वन कंट्री दैट आई मीन व्हिच व्हिच सिट्स विद लाइक अ ह्यूज एसेट ऑफ यू नो आवर हेरिटेज and uh, i have heard like people telling like only 10% or you know uh, 20% is in our institutions to to for view i think uh, it's important like i mean we should you know start rethinking about that kind of uh, infrastructure and uh, to build art infrastructure is also very important because otherwise that what you are saying it will never happen that art will never have an impact on society because they don't see it you know in a simple way we put like you know cinema has a effect on people because you know they have an access to that you know so i mean different kind of literature has you know uh, a power on people because people have an access to that it's part of our learning systems we don't you know uh, learn art unless it is a specialized scheme of things in our schools or you know like other premises so it's very create sorry it was a call this uh, it's very important that i mean you know we create infrastructure you know if at all you want you know you know a certain kind of a influence of art on people i mean they should be able to kind of visit you know our museums our institutions our galleries you know without having much inhibitions so then it makes i mean so in that context i mean kochi is also a big example that i mean where you know 
uh, five lakh people that come and visiting, you know, an art project which is a temporary, you know, project for three, three and a half, four months, which created a kind of transformation in people because they encountered, you know, art in its physical space. I mean, you know, they 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 could encounter it. It changed their perceptions about many forms of art. I mean, because I I still remember installation became a popular word, you know. Uh, at that time, uh, especially in Kerala, because what you know, what is this art form all about? And I'm st I still remember like people enjoying some of the video installation works with you know great amount of amazement. You know, like I mean, it's it's uh, so unless and until we provide that infrastructure to people, we as artists we cannot argue. You know that, or uh, you know, our system cannot argue or you know complain that I mean you know. Uh, uh, you are not engaging with us. So, yeah. Um, so, we will take some live questions. Lenge. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, in your work, you can see text. So, how did this idea come from? Text. Text. Yeah. You text mean text? And, yeah, text. T-X-T, text. Yeah, I think I have... Uh, uh, not used much, I would say, but I have used at uh, you know certain uh, uh, projects. Uh, I the, my maybe the first work which I did uh, uh, using a, uh, I mean, a, a an important work which was also shown in an international show was uh, an aeroplane, a wooden aeroplane which is like around 25, 30 feet long, uh, carrying the prayer which you say you know when you. When you when you when you take off, I mean, you know, you, you when you when you proceed with the uh, uh, travel. So I remember that work from because of a, a particular uh, political, uh, you know, symbolism of that. And I remember doing one work that uh, you know, which was also a Malayalam text, uh, which uh, spoke about vote jiga, I mean, please vote, which was in a you know a larger. Then uh, in Faith Accompli, I used alphabets. I, did, I, I wouldn't say that I used text because there was a work called uh, Lost Resonance uh, where, I used, where I again used Arabic calligraphy with, in between the minarets. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, the text has come, you know, and rarely in my work. It only came that when it was very relevant in that context. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, that was a work uh, uh, which was shown. Uh, you're referring to the work which was shown uh, in uh, uh, Holy Shiver project, which happened in Delhi, where I addressed, uh, you know, some of the important aspects about one. I said that constitution was uh, all, all 26 pages from the constitution was displayed in that. And there were this you know, work uh, of Ambedkar statues, and there was a work uh, of uh, the dancing girl. In the next room, I had this particular work, the two, you know, very aggressive male figures. In between that, I mean, you have this uh, lotus flower, you know, uh, coming up. So it was a kind of a rereading of, you know, because in that particular show, I was looking at certain symbolisms which attribute a certain values to us. For example, you know, land capital. The How was land capital adopted as uh, our national symbolism? It came from a certain lineage, you know, from Buddhism to Ashoka, then Nehru decides to kind of use it as. So every, you know, image has a certain attributed value when it becomes your you know, your, your symbol, I mean, especially in the context of a national symbol. The similar kind of value is also an attribute to, you know, our national symbol, which again comes from a kind of, you know, certain kind of a Buddhist, you know, ideologies. So that was, you know, um, a way of celebrating, but also expressing that entrapment of a national flower in between a very egocentric, you know, uh, you know, approach towards, you know, a political system and how do you, you know, 
relook at our national symbol in such a situation that where it is suppressed with not a diverse spirit but a spirit towards building a monoculture so it's my that was my you know approach in that work okay uh, hum ek last question lenge time ki kami hone ke wajah se sirf ek hi question le sakte hain abhi aapke dwara kiye gaye curative projects ke kuch purane kisse hum sunna chahte hain yeah i think uh, i mean i've involved in like i mean in a recent times many uh, curated projects one was uh, the matanjeri project which uh, in fact looked at the last 60 years of uh, the people's life in matanjeri many important uh, artists participated in that but uh, something which i cherish uh, a lot uh, a project which developed because of my you know uh, argument with our you know our tendency to follow only like a very eurocentric or an american centric you know art thinking or discourses and uh, we don't look at our neighbors and so that was something which uh, came into my my head after the first two editions of uh, hochi musras binale then i started engaging with this project called young subcontinent and uh, which was a project uh, you know uh, was exhibited in uh, Serendipity Art Festival, uh, uh, which started in 2015, and that's uh, you know an important uh, uh, project which I always cherish because I had two uh, curatorial consultants, Dr. C. S. Venkateshwar, and a film scholar and a famous journalist, uh, uh, Amrit Lal, who is based in Delhi, who works in Indian Express. So we started traveling like uh, to. the subcontinent i mean we visited uh, you know i mean even went to kabul i mean we went to you know uh, you know jaffna we went to different areas in, in sri lanka we went to myanmar i mean we went to you know yangon and you know like mandalay and uh, and uh, remember that travel which we made to kind of uh, nepal and bhutan and you know bangladesh pakistan we couldn't go because of you know many uh, difficulties but the learning which we had in those travels the concerns with the young generation is carrying in their mind and uh, this was a project like I mean, which was fully funded by the serendipity art fest and uh, it was also an invitation to goa for 15 day as a residency project along with an exhibition which happened at the festival time so they all came from this young artist three to four artists from each countries they all came and shared their experiences and after these three editions of you know this young subcontinent project which was also like i mean curatorially helped you know with uh, you know with, with with one of my you know young friend he you know he still follows up i mean we still you know communicate and I, I, the outcome of that project was not that exhibition that outcome of that project was that young community of those young artists they are still in conversation you know they express their con- consider i think that project which started with a particular argument you know where you know where do you find a kind of a neutral venue where you can all come together and sit together and talk and share your work of art i think which still continues as a particular community which evolved from a curatorial project but they all you know through whatsapp groups and in through email as they are still in touch i think that's one project that because you know i don't want to kind of go into my experiences in jaffna and kalinochi or you know like i mean going to my experiences in kabul or you know you know driving to you know different parts of the city with a lot of fear inside and uh, you know so it's I, i i don't want to go into that but uh, the research which we did uh, and the travels which we did together Uh, to understand the, the crisis in the subcontinent is something which i cherish a lot and it's something which i would like to also kind of and i'm still working on to kind of further uh, that particular project because that's a project which demands you know a uh, lot of investment because uh, they all one of the most surprising thing is that they all look up to india i mean as a site for their further art engagement they want to exhibit in india i mean you know, it's an amazing feeling that i mean you know when you travel in places you know going to like i mean you know art institutions uh, in in these remote places and for example you know a place like uh, 
you know, uh, Bhutan doesn't have, doesn't even have an art institution. You know, they have only an art center. They have traditional art institutions, but they don't have a contemporary art institution. So these realities, like you know, when you get into it, but you know, their concern, their angst. I don't think I mean it has been you know uh, hugely uh, uh, expressed well. So yeah, I think it's, it's that's one of my strong uh, uh, thought that I mean we have to look at our neighbors and we need to kind of make you know uh, possible sites that where you know we 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 can learn from our own histories. Uh, we have a, you know, we have shared languages. We we have shared myth. Uh, shared, we have, you know, shared water. You know, so it's I don't know. I mean, you know, you can go on. You know, starting like coming I mean, crossing the border, to and that this is a particular site that which we have missed. I mean, I know there are some other uh, institutions who are involved through photographic projects. Now there is a lot of conversations happening because some interesting exhibition projects have like I mean, evolved in the last uh, seven eight years. But uh, yeah, I think this is one project which excites me a lot. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. आपने अपने अमूल्य समय में से कुछ समय निकाल कर हम हमें वह हमारे दर्शकों के लिए दिया. Foundation of Art and Culture आपका बहुत बहुत आभारी है. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anadhi. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Okay. Stay safe. Bye, sir. Bye, bye. Bye, sir. Bye. Take care. Bye, bye. धन्यवाद कल हम मिल, आ, मिलेंगे कंचन मैम से शाम को पाँच बजे आप सभी का फिर से स्वागत धन्यवाद